The focus of this presentation is QsControl.net and more specifically the basis product line. Today's agenda, what is QsControl.net? What does it encompass? We'll be discussing all of the hardware and all of the software aspects of QsControl.net. So what is the term QsControl.net? It is not a single product or even a product line. It is an umbrella term for an entire architecture which encompasses all of our Ethernet network audio system devices. It includes all of the hardware and software components of a networked audio system. Of course, it includes our new basis product platform, which will be described in more detail in a moment, but it also includes our legacy products such as our CM16A and our legacy RAVE units. It even includes the amplifiers, the loudspeakers, any network cabling, and the Ethernet switches. Of course, QSC doesn't make all of the pieces and parts of the system, such as the CAT5 cables and switches, but these are considered part of the QsControl.net architecture. QsControl.net also includes the software, which is running on a Windows PC. Typically, it would be our venue manager software. However, it may also be Q's Creator or Q's Cat applications or our Notify applet. Q's Creator and Q's Cat can be used to create more customized skins with bitmap images, hotspot buttons, master faders, and so on to allow end users to control and monitor their system without having a complicated, confusing graphical user interface or GUI. Notify is an applet which can run in the background, monitoring the system status and presenting notifications of any issues. The notifications can be relay closures, pop-up message boxes, or even email messages. The .NET part of QsControl.NET comes from our implementation of Microsoft's .NET framework along with the Visual Studio .NET programming environment. The Q's Control part, however, is not new. We introduced Q's Control well over a dozen years ago with the earliest networked audio control product, our original CM16. More on this in a moment. Let's discuss the hardware aspects of Q's Control.net. It consists of three different technologies rolled into one package called BASIS. For this discussion and presentation, we'll use the BASIS 922AZ since it has all of the features of the product line. Additionally, the 922AZ was the first of this product series, but now there are 11 different models in production. The first technology to discuss is the ability to control, monitor, and protect the amps and loudspeakers over an Ethernet network. This is not a new technology. This is very mature and proven technology introduced by QSC way back in the early 1990s. QSC was the first to market a successful Ethernet-based control solution over 12 years ago. You can even Google on the Internet and search for the white paper we presented at the 99th Annual AES Convention in 1995. AES stands for Audio Engineering Society. This paper outlined the feasibility of using an existing computer networking standard, Ethernet and its protocols, as opposed to the proprietary network schemes that were being proposed at the time, as the correct solution for a common control network for professional audio systems. The second technology is the use of Covernet for audio transport. Again, this is not a new technology, but is instead a proven, reliable, and mature solution for sending multiple audio channels throughout a network. It is also based on Ethernet. While QSC did not invent Cobranet, we were the first Cobranet licensee in the industry with our legacy RAVE products. Now there are over 40 licensees with about 65 shipping Cobranet products. All of these products can coexist on a network and share audio signals among them. Cobranet is now the de facto standard for network audio transport. The third technology built into BASIS is configurable digital signal processing. Here, Q 
QSC was not the first, but we do have successful DSP products such as the DSP-3, DSP-4, and DSP-30 modules that we've designed and produced since 2000. Everything we learned about proper design and implementation of DSP products, both hardware and software, went into the basis product line. One note about the DSP-3, 4, and 30. These devices will not show up in or be controlled with the new QsControl.net software, but there's nothing wrong in using these along with basis on a system. The QsControl.net system won't see them. They'll be transparent to the basis and to the software. In reality, most systems wouldn't need both the DSP modules along with the basis. The basis has more than enough DSP horsepower for all of its channels without having to rely on additional external DSP modules.